up, dude? All right, guys, so me and the boys are out in the garage today and I'm working on the car. So uh, you can see I did take the water pump off. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about water pumps. Yeah. So I am going with a different water pump. I know I just got the LS1 water pump and I'm changing it now. I'm going to a different water pump because I did a little bit more research and I didn't know this before. And if I didn't know it, there's probably other people that didn't know it. And I want to share this information and show everybody. So if you knew this information already, awesome. If not, hopefully you can learn something from this because I spent a little bit of extra money because I didn't do enough research ahead of time. But I think it'll be better for this application in the end. We taught him how to say taco the other day. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing, uh, another hiccup that I ran into, and how I'm gonna fix that, and what options we have. Okay, so just jumping right into it, we have a truck pump, LS1 pump, and an LS3 pump. So this is like LS3, Corvette, it comes up if you search for it quite a few different ways. Uh, but the big differences here are, this one you can see it's significantly shorter, even more short than the LS1 pump, which a lot of people switch to the LS1 pump and crank pulley setup because it's three quarters of an inch shallower and you get a little bit more space out of it. So you can see the difference in the height all the way from the nose. This one's shorter and the pulley position is a lot different. So this requires a different crank pulley and all your pulleys and accessories are three quarters of an inch shallower than the truck setup. You can go even shorter, which I didn't realize this, or I would have done this right away. This thing is even another three quarters of an inch shorter than the LS1 pump, which requires another pulley. And that's why I'm doing something different. Instead of jumping into buying a different pulley right away, because I bought a different pulley, I bought an LS1 pulley to put on the car. So right now I have an LS1 pulley on there, I had the LS1 pump on there, but now I'm switching to this pump because I believe the nose on here is going to hit the radiator setup. So this thing is quite a bit shorter, so I'll have a lot more space, but by switching this pump, it's not going to line up with the crank pulley. So not a big deal, I could just get the other crank pulley, but then that's going to suck in all the other accessories, which is going to change the position of all of this stuff, and I spent a day setting up the tensioner, alternator, power steering, all that stuff is set to the distance of the LS1 crank pulley now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to space the LS3 pump out to line up with the LS1 pulley and that's what this little kit is for. So this comes with the spacers, all the bolts, a set screw, and a hole in it. So this has the provisions for a steam vent line, which is kind of cool actually. So this actually works out pretty sweet. So a lot of people like to run the steam vent line out and then they tap the water pump or whatever. That thing has a hole built right into it. This was $30 and the reason for this, I'll show you, is basically to pull it out so the belt still lines up with the LS1 pulley and this water pump. And if you're wondering at this point, like, why would you buy a shallower pulley just to space it out? That doesn't really make any sense. So let me show you guys. Let me explain it. So I do have the spacers underneath the pulley. So it's equivalent to where it would be with this pump on the block. But if you look at the, the nose on the pulley, this is still much shallower than the LS1. Even though it's spaced out, it's still much shallower. It's about probably another three quarters of an inch-ish. So I'm still spacing it out from the block, but I get more clearance from the radiator. And if I do need more clearance, I can go even another three quarters of an inch away from the radiator by removing the spacers but then I would need the crank pulley and change the other accessories. So this is uh, my compromise for now, is to put the spacers in there, then I don't have to change the pulley, I don't have to change the rest of the accessories, everything can stay where I put it, and probably the cheapest option, and it's gonna save me a bunch of time, and it's a lot shorter still. So this I thought was gonna work, this would probably work, 
but this is gonna work even better. All right, so let's look at what we really have to gain here. We got two inches from the nose of the truck water pump to the LS1 pump. It's a three quarter inch belt position and accessory position. That's what you gain, but from the nose on the truck pump to the nose on the car pump, it's about a quarter inch difference. Two inches to one and three quarters. So now let's see what the difference between the LS1 pump and the LS3 pump is. So if we take this thing straight across here, the nose on the pump is flush with the water neck. So we gain another three quarters of an inch. That's pretty good. So you guys that are new uh, are probably asking why do I really care about three quarters of an inch? It shouldn't really be that important. A lot of times just going from the truck pump to the car setup is enough. But in this build, I'm gonna need every every bit of space I can get. So this is not really a kit built LS swap in this car. If you guys are new, if you're not new, you know this already and I'm sorry, but uh, I'm using the Collins kit with the factory drive shaft and even Collins, Brett Collins recommended not using this. It says it's not possible, need a custom length drive shaft, do all this junk. So I'm trying everything I can to make this fit with using the stock drive shaft. This is probably the cheapest method possible and trying to get everything to fit. So one thing I did think I was gonna have issues with was clearance. And if we're looking at the positioning here where the radiator support is gonna mount, it's pretty tight there and the radiator is gonna sit back a little bit more. So that extra little bit that that nose was sticking out on the other pump probably would have hit the fans or the radiator. I don't think it would have hit the radiator, but maybe the fans that were on there, so I wanted to suck it back a little bit tighter. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I was correct. This water pump does fit. However, it barely fits. So, I was correct in that the measurement, the water pump doesn't hit the radiator. It doesn't hit the radiator. So I could remove the fans, but I still have the, the tight water neck here, and it's just a little bit close for comfort. Here's a side look. Like I said, everything fits. This is in uh, its normal position. Everything's pretty much hanging there. So obviously I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative here. This is not going to work as it sits right now. However, this bumper and the way that this whole thing is set up, I did measure it. This radiator has like six inches of clearance underneath it. So this thing can come down six inches before it would even be anywhere near the bottom of the bumper and it's 10 inches from the front of the bumper so there's a lot of room to like house criminals and stuff inside of here and do what we need to do so if anything i could just kind of angle it lean it back and suck it down into the bumper and it would be perfect so i might repurpose some of this support or i might just make a whole new one but Anyways, that's really that's really the only thing kind of holding this thing up. So uh, if I just completely created a whole new one, that'd probably be the fastest way. But we'll see. Uh, I know it's not going to be ideal like this. So we're going to try to figure out what to do. This throttle body is going to be a little bit close to the hood. I did kind of eyeball it across. And it's, it's going to be very close there. So we'll see. But honestly, guys, this is kind of the part in the build where you need to make a decision. So, and like I said, in the beginning of this whole beard beard series, it's kind of a beard series. The beginning of the whole build series was to kind of show what you needed to do to do this if you wanted to use the Collins kit with the stock drive shaft. I'm saving money by doing this, but it's taking a lot of extra time and having to build a lot of stuff. So if you don't have the resources to build it, if you don't have the patience, this probably isn't for you. So I don't, I don't mind this at all. I enjoy doing this stuff, I like doing this stuff, but this is, if this is not for you, just think about that ahead of time. There's kits out there, they're a little bit pricey, but they'll put everything right where it needs to be and you don't have to worry about it. So this, I wanted to build everything, do it as cheap as possible. I'll have a lot less into this than a regular kit, but I'll have a lot more time, so. You just kind of got to play the game and do what you want to do. More to come on this thing. That's kind of cool. Motivating to see it like this. I think it kind of looks like a, a car again. I sent this picture to Hunter at Hunter Tuned and he's like, holy shit, dude, it looks like a car again. So it's kind of motivating. I'm excited to see it like this. And I uh, just got to figure out this radiator support and 
we'll get this thing zipping.